Does religion cause violence and war? It's an argument that many atheists and modern people who have allowed science to become their religion have made. They say that religion is a thing of the past, a relic of a time where we didn't understand the world through science, where we used religion as a means to explain the unexplainable. But in modern times, it's outdated, it's obsolete, and it's the cause of division, of war, and unnecessary violence, and justifying the killing of other as opposed to us. Implementing more of that tribal mindset which has characterized humans for so long. And in this video, I'm going to take that argument that religion does cause violence and war and dissect it piece by piece to illustrate the fact that religion in and of itself as a spiritual path does not cause violence and war. Let's get into it. This is the Quran. This is one message, one book, that can be interpreted in many different ways. Let's take two different people, two different men that are at different levels of spiritual and psychological development. One man reads the Qur'an and he becomes angry, he becomes violent. He uses the message, the revelation, to justify killing innocent people. To justify going on murder rampages. To justify putting an explosive vest on his chest, going into a crowded area and yelling Allahu Akbar, boom, being a suicide bomber. Take a second man, a man who has more psychological and spiritual development, who takes the same exact message, the same exact book, and uses it as a force for love, becomes purified within himself submits his ego to spirit, submits his self to God, becomes a source of peace, of love, of wisdom, and an inspiration for others to be better versions of themselves, spreading love, spreading peace, being a force for good in this world. The same exact message, the same Quran, the same, well, this is this is English, so it's more of an interpretation of the Qur'an. If you want the real Qur'an, obviously it has to be in Arabic. But the same message, interpreted and digested and realized in two very different ways. You see, religion is all interpretation. When people misinterpret and misuse religion to justify killing, justify violence, justify being a horrible person, that's not the religion's fault. That's the person's deviation from that spiritual path. That's that person's own problem, most likely being stuck in ego and not truly digesting, not truly implementing the message in that religious text, in that religious message. So religion is all interpretation. Specifically in Islam, followers are urged in the Qur'an to seek knowledge, to seek wisdom for themselves, to read, to ikra in the name of your Lord, to seek that knowledge, to ascend through the stations of spiritual and mental development. But it's all interpretation. The same message can be digested in two very different ways. But then the atheists and scientifically minded people who want to detract from religion would point at history. They'll look back in time and point at historical contexts, historical wars and conflicts to justify the statement that religion is promoting violence and war. And so let's take a little bit of a historical look on this. One of the first places that these people go when they want to use a historical reference is the Crusades. They will say the Crusades was launched by European Christians in order to go to the Holy Land and reclaim it. And now, while that definitely was the primary concern with the Crusades, on the surface, deep down, it actually wasn't. The Crusades was a attempt to grab power, to grab land, to grab trade routes. And this is evident in the fourth crusade, right? So these Europeans would be going to the Holy Land in order to fight the Muslims and take Jerusalem. 
But what was the fourth crusade? The Europeans, on their way to the Holy Land, stopped in Constantinople. Now, Constantinople was part of the Byzantine Empire, part of the Eastern Roman Empire. They were Christian as well, Eastern Orthodox. The Crusaders were Roman Catholic. On their way to the Holy Land, they stopped in Constantinople. They sacked it. They pillaged it. They killed people there. They just stopped and then they went back home. They took all the goods. They took all the things they wanted to. They raped. They pillaged. And then they left. Was that in the name of religion? No. That fourth crusade indicated what the crusades was all about. It was about man's desire for power, for control, for wealth. If we look more at modern times, especially the 20th century, the 1900s was by far the most deadliest century in human history. And while it might be convenient to point at World War II and say that Hitler was motivated by religion in order to kill the Jews, which ensued World War II and allowed all that violence to happen, when we really look deeper into it, the 20th century and all the violence and wars that occurred in these hundred years were not religiously motivated. They were motivated by economic struggle, the struggle for resources, ideological differences, political differences, imperialism. These were not religious conflicts. These were mankind's conflicts since the dawn of time. We can look further back in history and we can say, uh, without a question of a doubt, that before religion was institutionalized, before religion became, uh, especially monotheistic religions, became more mainstream in societies, people were freaking barbaric, man. Think about the Romans. Think about the Roman Empire. We like to glorify Rome. We like to glorify Julius Caesar in particular. But what did Julius Caesar do? One of his many accomplishments, uh, military accomplishments, was taking over Gaul, conquering Gaul, which is modern day France. When he conquered it, there was about a million Gaulians. Now, numbers can be you know changed depending on the historical reference. About a million people just outrightly killed. Modern day, we call that genocide. Back in the day, genocide wasn't a thing. They just killed. They wanted power. They wanted uh, food. They, they didn't have food. Oh, that city has food. Let's go kill everybody, rape everybody, take that food, and now it's ours. And we can go look back at other barbaric times in history by people who maybe had many gods, pagan gods, or... Um, no religion at all, and the things that they did were absolutely atrocious. And especially in current times, the last, let's say, 20, 30 years, go back since World War II, World War II till now, what were all the wars, especially American wars, justified on? What were they motivated by? The Vietnam War, Korean War, War in Iraq and Afghanistan, all the wars in the Middle East, all the wars that America in particular have been involved in in the last 60, 70 years have had nothing to do with religion. They've had to do with unbridled capitalism, actually crony capitalism, not even true capitalism, and fueling the military industrial complex. Think about all the wars. Right? I, I served as a United States Marine. I was part of the cog in this machine. And that's what opened my eyes to what were we at in the Middle East to, to begin with? Was it really to fight terror? Was it really to uh, for freedom? When in reality, we funded all these terrorist groups. We funded and trained uh, Osama bin Laden. And uh, we at one point supported Saddam Hussein. What was the reason why we used propaganda to take out Gaddafi in Libya? When we really start to dive in deep and you really begin to understand America and more of this modern uh, idea of why we do war in the first place, it has absolutely nothing to do with religion. We killed a million Iraqis in Iraq. Why? A lot of those people were innocent. A lot of those people were just trying to live with their families. Innocent Iraqis, right? 
that's a whole nother topic for another day. But the modern conflicts, the modern wars, even this conflict going on in the Middle East and Gaza and Israel, um, it's not, it doesn't, it has a thin veneer of religion on the surface to justify a lot of these. But when you really look deep down, it has to do with power, economic control, uh, resources, all these things, nothing to do with actual religion, actual spiritual paths and their differences. Religion, uh, specifically Islam, when it came to be the Sharia law, oh, I said Sharia law, oh man. Are you probably getting scared? You're shaking in your boots. I said Sharia law. What does that mean? Part of the Sharia law was basically the modern Gen Geneva Convention, the modern rules for war and engagement were institutionalized 1400 years ago by Islam, by uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, by the rules of engagement, right? What did Islam advocate for in terms of warfare? Warfare is an in inevitable essence of humanity. We have been waging war, we have been violent with each other since the dawn of time. But Islam came and set rules for this engagement, rules for this violence. You will not kill women, children, the elderly. You will not kill non-combatants. You will not burn uh, or use fire to pillage the lands. You will, when the enemy surrenders, you will stop fighting. These were rules institutionalized by religion in order to counteract the innate violence within a man's heart, especially when it, that mind of a man is conditioned in tribal aspects, in hatred, in anger for the other. And so religion is a force for good in this aspect. The term jihad, uh, has been used by uh, Islamophobes and other people to detract from Islam in particular. Uh, we will make a whole video on jihad in the future. Basically, the greater jihad is a struggle against the self. Jihad is not a justification of war. The lesser jihad, the actual jihad used for conducting war in this material world, is strictly against oppression. Now, Islam in a lot of ways has been changed and tainted and the interpretation has become more mainstream in a way that is uh, detrimental to the Ummah and I will make a whole video on uh, Salafism and Wahhabism and how it's in you know, essence corrupted the essence of Islam but that's a topic for another day. Religion in general and all religions, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Taoism, Hinduism, Zoroastrianism, all these religions, there's many more, uh, in the core, the essence of them, they have a message of good, a message of caring and giving charity for the poor, an essence of self-purification, of taming the ego in different ways, but taming, evolving the ego in a way uh, so it's under the whims of the spirit of God. These are all forces for good. In our modern day, where secularism and scientism is the modern religion, what do we have? We have corruption. We have all these things. We have materialism to the max. People are on, uh, sad. I mean, how many people, how many modern day people, Westerners, Americans, Europeans, are on antidepressants, are on psychotic drugs to tame, to mask the symptoms of this deeper existential crisis? This is all in the name of secularism, all in the name of uh, scientism. Religion in itself does not cause war, does not cause violence. I'm telling you, without religion, take all religions out of the equation, take all spiritual inclinations of man out of the equation, mankind would be much more violent. We would be so much more violent. Think about the stuff we would commit now, take away all the more morality in it, we would be extremely violent. Religion is not a thing of the past. In fact, people of today need to get more in tune with a spiritual path. The term religion has, has become maybe a dirty word in, in the aspect of man's interpretation of it, tainting it and tainting people's idea of it. But that is what this channel is. That's the mission of this channel. That's the mission of my message is to bring a more solid, a more 
uh, integrated interpretation of this, bringing peace and love, unity, but self-discipline, taming your ego, and not being a force for evil, a force to justify violence and killing. And so that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum.